What is up guys, I'm Daddy Gamer Fred and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon News Daily, a daily Pokemon show where I go over Pokemon news spamming across all the Pokemon games, including Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, Pokemon Quest, Pokemon Go, and of course, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee Games. Today is Tuesday, July 4th, 2018, and I just want to say happy 4th of July to everyone who celebrates it out in the U.S. I'm out here in Switzerland. We don't celebrate it, so I'm going to be pulling out a Pokemon news video for you guys. So again, with it being July 4th, we don't have too much news, so let's jump right into it. So the first news story is going to be about Pokemon Go's, that the last Safari Zone event ending the Pokemon 2018 Summer Tour is going to be this Safari Zone event and again and I'm probably saying this wrong Yokosuda Japan so this is coming directly from PokemonGoLive.com the official Niantic and Pokemon Go website I'm having a link to this news post in the description below it says trainers our Pokemon Go Summer Tour 2018 will come to a close with our final event the Pokemon Go Safari Zone event in Yokosuda Japan this event kicks off Wednesday, August 29th, and lasts until Sunday, September 2nd. It says the Pokemon Go Safari Zone in Yokosuka, Japan is a free event, but those who wish to attend will need to apply through the Yokosuka City Special website. I'm gonna have the link to the website if you're trying to go in the description below. It says applications open up on Friday, July 6th at 10 a.m. Japanese Standard Time and will close on Friday, July 20th, again at 10 a.m. GST. So do not delay if you are interested in attending. If applications exceed the capacity of the event a drawing will be held in yoko city to select the attendees if selected trainers will receive a ticket containing a 2d barcode note that these trainers without a ticket will not encounter the pokemon at the event location and i think this is important this is a way to kind of filter out any players who are not participating in the event to kind of give them an incentive to leave the area of the event so they can go out and catch Pokemon that's going to be out throughout Japan for this event and I'm going to jump into that later but as well to avoid this basically travesty of the network crashing and them being able having to pull out extra cell signals and stuff like that it's just a way to kind of help the cellular problem this game will face regardless and I think it's going to face problems, especially when you have tons of people lining up to play a one game that needs, you know, a strong cellular network. Now, it is Japan. They're going to have fast internet speeds and stuff like that out there. I'm sure of it. But I would hope that this system will help the players at the event locations to be able to log in and get in and play. It says the Yoko Suka Pokemon Go Safari Zone event will be held over the course of five days days five different days it says but the gameplay is designed to be a single day experience in order to give as many trainers as possible the chance to participate and take part participation is limited to the day listed on each ticket so basically if a trainer somehow managed to obtain multiple tickets they will be only able to find special pokemon on that day the first ticket was claimed so there's no double dipping for multiple days so if you pop in one one day you play that's pretty much it your experience for the safari zone event is kind of over it says the celebration of the yokosuka pokemon go safari zone event pokemon such as feebas and torchic will be found more often throughout japan the whole japan not just at the safari zone event locations it says additionally wingle will appear more frequently worldwide and lucky trainers may even encounter its shiny form so that's pretty cool we're gonna get wingle added to the game as well
well as its shiny variant and as well as helper it's of evolutionary form and its shiny variant for that and to top it off professor willow's global challenge will take place on september 1st and september 2nd giving trainers all over the world the opportunity to unlock incredible bonuses while they take part in this special event it says we can't wait to see you there the pokemon go team and i think this is a pretty cool event it's we're getting stuff for worldwide players so players all over the world such as me have a chance to catch you know a wingle a shiny wingle which is pretty cool people in japan can catch Feebas and torchic as well so that's pretty cool and then over in yokosuka if you are in that area i would say grab a ticket to try to get into this pokemon go so Safari's own event. It sounds like it's going to be a blast. I would do it if I'm in Japan, but I'm currently not. But you have five days to kind of enter. I'm going to have a link to the website so you guys could see how exactly you have to register. The website looks pretty, you know, bare bones. It just says click here and it shows you how to apply and stuff like that. And if you were to make it, how do you apply the barcode and stuff like that? So I would say check it out if you plan on going to the Safari Zone event. Now, while we on the topic of Pokemon Go, we got a brand new APK teardown from Pokemon Go Hub and we actually found out a little bit of information from the APK not too much stuff to be excited for but let's just go over what they have found so it says Hydro Cannon has appeared in the game Master Files. Now, if you don't know, Hydro Cannon is the move that's gonna be added to Blastoise. Now, Hydro Cannon is an amazing fast move and it's actually probably the fastest charge move currently in a game. It deals 90 damage and it's just 1.9 seconds. And it actually revealed through the APK that it's gonna be a two bar charge move despite the images showing that it was a three bar charge move that was released by Niantic which is weird so we might see that change from a two bar to a three bar or vice versa from a three bar to a two bar so be on the lookout for that now Pokemon Go Hub shits all over Blastoise for good reason it says however Blastoise is so bad in Pokemon Go that even this amazing move doesn't make it good unfortunately Hydro Cannon Blastoise performs terribly when compared to other water type Pokemon such as the legendary Pokemon Pokemon Kyogre, the Evolution Vaporeon, and the starters for Alligator and Swamper. It says we can look forward to seeing this move on other starter Pokemon in the future, but now it's more of a novelty. In order to appreciate how good the move is actually is, check out the table below. I'm gonna have a link to this article so you can check out the table if you are interested in checking this out. I think it's pretty cool the breakdown they do of Hydro Cannon over other moves and other Pokemon and stuff like that. It's kind of sad to see that such a good move is going to again a pokemon that is not going to make a difference on it it is a cool novelty though to have a pokemon like blastoise with an exclusive move potentially being a shiny blastoise with this pacific move Again, it's a novelty. It's for Pokemon Go community today. Hopefully we can have this Blastoise still have the sunglasses. Fingers crossed on that. If it anything like what we've seen with Raichu having the Christmas hat and stuff like that. Hopefully we can have that. I think that'll be pretty cool. This move is cool. It just sucks that it's stuck on a bad Pokemon, but hopefully that will change in the future. Hopefully we do see a Fur Alligator or Swamper community day that would get this move. So also with the APK tail down, they didn't find too much stuff. They found a lot of bug fixes, but they did notice that the special research encountered no longer used the wording Mew encounter. They had switched the Mew encounter text to quest Pokemon encounter. I think that personally that this was done because they gotta have other Pokemon appearing in quest. So they had to kind of adjust for that and they didn't probably know we're gonna be reading this APK and didn't wanna just put Celebi quest, which they could have did. But I think putting quest Pokemon encounter kind of feature proof so they don't have to change it every time they introduce a new mythical Pokemon throughout this quest system. Also found in the APK teardown 
is that new avatar items are coming. These new avatar items are named Pikachu fan headband, Pikachu fan shirt, Pikachu fan shorts, and Pikachu fan shoes. So if you don't know, the Pikachu fan is a Pokemon staple. I think they've been introduced since Gen 1. It's basically a Pokemon trainer who only uses Pikachu and usually dress accordingly as well. Kind of cool that we are seeing that Pokemon trainer represented being brought over to Pokemon Go. I want to see how it looks. Hopefully it does represent how it, hopefully it does resemble the iconic Pikachu fan from the games. And we also got a new feature coming to the game, which is nickname a friend. So you'll be able to pretty much nickname a friend on your friends list, which is probably cool in theory, and you would probably want to do that, but I, we need way more features for that friends list. I need to be able to sort it. I need to be able to pick who's on top. I need to be able to automatically send gifts to, to a person once I pick up a gift or something like that. There's tons of stuff they can add to this friend feature. I'm glad that they're not gonna waste any time and they're gonna just start squeezing us new features left and right. And if this is a, just a sign of what's to come, I think it's pretty cool. Also in the news, the vanilla versions of Pokemon Sun and Moon are now on sale at GameStop for $25 each, which is pretty good. Pokemon games usually don't drop below $30, so to see them at $25 is pretty cool, especially for the base games of Pokemon Sun and Moon. Seven generation was an amazing generation, probably one of my favorites in a long while. So to see that it's see it at a such cheap entry point is pretty cool. Yes, it's not the ultra games, but again, if you needed to get you know, a copy of Moon or a copy of Sun because you already had the other version. Now it's a perfect time to jump on. I'm gonna have a link in the description so you guys can grab it. And that's gonna do it for today's July 4th Pokemon News Daily. Now let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on everything we went over. Let me know if you're gonna be picking up Pokemon Sun or Pokemon Moon via GameStop for 25 bucks. I think it's a pretty good deal. Also, let me know your thoughts on the Pokemon Safari Zone event in Yokosuda, Japan. Are you lucky enough to be in Japan listening to this and are you gonna go? And are you hyped for Wingo joining that shiny Pokemon list which is getting up there. We're getting a ton of shiny Pokemon added to Pokemon Go. It's kind of hard to keep up. I'm trying, trying my best. I'm doing slightly okay. I missed a few. Hopefully this Wingo one will be able to grab it. Also, let me know your thoughts on Hydro Cannon and the findings that Pokemon Go Hub found on Hydro Cannon and how it's kind of not good. <laughs> it's a good move, but on a bad Pokemon. Let me know your thoughts on that as well. Like always, guys, I'm Daddy Yama Fred on Instagram and Twitter, and you guys can bring the conversation there. I'm the American gamer in Switzerland right here on YouTube, and yes, I'm gonna be doing a ton of videos just like this one. So if you enjoy, please hit that subscribe button. Also, hit the like button. It does help me out a ton as far as growing the channel is concerned. Ring the bell if you wanna be notified on the next time I drop a video. Peace, I'm gonna see you guys on on the next one.